Hello everyone and welcome to the 24th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be starting with a uh, drag and drop in Cocoa. I know this has been a tutorial that many people have requested so uh, this is the tutorial and uh, the next two will be as well. So this will be a three-part series. The first part will just be kind of introducing a little bit of what we're doing in the tutorial, getting a few things set up for our view, and um, there's just many other things that we can work with that uh, can't really be covered in so short of time. Um, I could make this a really long tutorial, but I prefer to keep them rather uh, short and condensed. So anyway, um, again, this is just the first one out of three. Um, and some prerequisites for this tutorial, you're going to have to watch the 2C tutorials that I did, Lesson 43 on binary and 44 on bitwise operators. Uh, we won't specifically be using them in this tutorial, but uh, we will be in the next two. So uh, if you haven't already watched those, you're going to have to watch uh, 43 and 44 in the C series before beginning uh, drag and drop. So. What is Coco Drag and Drop? For those of you who don't know, uh, essentially it's when you are dragging a file or a picture, pretty much anything that you drag around on Mac OS X is considered drag and drop. Um, so if you drag some object into your view, you can detect when that happens, you can detect when something exits your view, you can detect while you move it around in your view, you can detect when you let go of it, you can then uh, determine what you're going to do when you let go of it in the view, you can do tons of things, it's pretty much infinite uh, possibilities for what you want to do with drag and drop. Uh, you can fine tune it as much as you pretty much want. So for that, um, you are, we're going to be just kind of running through some of the methods that we're going to use. And um, yeah, so let's just get started here. So this is a new Xcode project just called Lesson24. I do not have ARC enabled, so ARC is off. It's automatic reference counting. And I just tell you that because it asks you uh, when you create a new project. So it's off for this tutorial. If uh, you know how to use it, then fine, you can go ahead and use it in this tutorial. And I will get into that in a later tutorial, but uh, for now we're still using good old classic retain counts or reference counting. So to get started here, essentially we want to have um, the main idea of this entire application is going to be that we'll drag some kind of image onto our uh, view that we're going to create, our subclass NS view. And then that view will fill up with the image uh, that we've dragged in. So it's going to be very similar to an NS image view, except, uh, of course, we can fine tune every aspect of uh, the drop itself. And you can expand what you learn in this tutorial in the next two to pretty much any drag and drop operation you ever do on a view. So with that, uh, we have to go ahead and make some kind of custom view here. So you can go ahead and type in custom view. You can drag it over here and drag the view out like this and we'll go ahead and set it up so that the struts are on all on the outside and then it expands up and down and left and right. So now our view is set to go here and we're going to want to make a new file for our NSView subclass so we can go ahead and file new file or command N. Make a new Objective-C class, we're going to call this drop view and it's going to be a subclass of NSView and of course we want to throw it in our project. So now we have our nice little drop view class over here, but the one more thing before we go into that, now that we've created that class, let's go ahead and make our custom view that class. So we'll call this drop view. And now you can see that our view that we have on our window is a drop view class. So with that, um, there's a few things basically that we have to set up for this. So since we're making this very similar to an NS image view, but it's not an NS image view, we have to have some way of holding the image. So to do that, of course, we're going to have to have a way to store the, uh, the image that we bring in, and we'll store it in an NS image. And we'll just call this image, and we'll make a property for it as well. And again, we're still using uh, standard classic uh, reference counting, so no arc here. NS image, image. And again, this is just going to be what's holding onto the um, the picture that we drag in, essentially, so the file that we're going to drag into this. And then we want to synthesize our image as well, and you could throw this in dialic while we're at it. 
And of course, you know, it's you're only working with one window, so you don't really have to uh, enable Dialic if you don't want to, because uh, the memory is going to be cleaned up anyway. But for our sake of completeness, we will just release it anyway. And super Dialic. All right. So now that we have all the instance variables and everything set up, uh, basically we have one more thing that we can do in our uh, our view here. And basically, you might be kind of wondering, well, how do we how do we we enable drag and drop? Um, because you know, so far, when you drag something on a view, it, it has no idea if you're dragging anything on it. And basically, what you do is you conform to a certain protocol, which is the NS dragging destination protocol. And it's actually an informal protocol, which means you don't specifically have to uh, call it within the greater than and less than brackets. But for specificity, or uh, just to specify that you're going to be using this protocol, we're going to do it anyway. So just go ahead and say dragging destination. And basically, NS dragging destination is a class that has, or not a class, sorry, it's a protocol that just has a bunch of methods we can enable um, to analyze uh, different events that happen when we drag objects in our view. So if we go ahead and option click on NS Dragging Destination, or you can just click it, and over in your quick help over here, you'll see that it offers you to click that. But if you option click uh, any word, basically, for this case, we're going to be clicking this, and you can click on NS Dragging Destination. And I'm just going to uh, point out that you can do this for pretty much any word that you're confused on that's part of uh, Coco's library or whatever. So if you're ever confused, uh, be sure just to option click the word. So anyway, if you did option click it and you uh, click on the name of it, you'll be brought to the documentation of the NS Dragging Destination Protocol. And basically, there's a bunch of different methods that we can use uh, for detecting when we drag something into a view and we drag it out. And I'm just going to run through a few of them that we'll be working with in the next tutorial. So we have dragging entered, which is simply when you drag some object into your view. That's when dragging entered is called. Dragging update is when you drag around your view with uh, the object that you're dragging. Dragging ended is when you basically release the object, uh, but you're not going to do anything with it. It's basically the end of the drag. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, I guess. Dragging exited is when you drag the object out of your view. And then, of course, there's a few other methods for when you can see after the image that you have is released. So prepare, prepare for drag destination is simply a bool one uh, that you return yes if you want to prepare for a drag operation. You return no if you don't want to um, do anything with a drag operation. Um, basically, then there's perform drag operation, which is what happens when you let go of the mouse on a view, and then you can perform whatever operation you want to. And then conclude drag operation is basically a conclusion of uh, whatever you want to do when you let go. Uh, it's a little bit different than perform, but we'll get, we'll kind of cover all those in uh, the next coming tutorials. So anyway, that's the documentation on NS Dragging Destination Protocol, and we'll go back to that in the next tutorial. But anyway, the point of that was that uh, that's the protocol that we're going to be using to identify all these methods uh, that we're going to be using. All right, so now we can flip over to the implementation side, and as you can see, we just have our standard uh, you know, NSView layout here. And the last thing that we're going to be doing in this tutorial is basically setting up our NSView to accept um, different events, different dragging events that occur. So this is very simple, um, but basically the idea of this is that NSView doesn't by default check for different things that are dragged onto it. So we have to tell it to basically register for different drag types. So to do this, all we have to say is self self, and then we just say register for drag types. And this takes an NS array of drag types. You may be wondering, well, what does a drag type mean? Well, another um, handy tip is if you don't know, uh, again, option click it. And you'll see that if you option click this and hit register for drag types, you'll be brought to the section where uh, this method is called. And you'll see that uh, it gives you another extension basically where you can look up all the standard drag types for um, this system. So if you want to look up specific drag types, there's tons of different drag types here for Mac OS X and later. And there's also others that you can still use, um, which are all here. These were the ones that we used previously, um, different types that you would drag on 
and um, so I believe you can still use all of these as well. Um, but anyway, that's um, basically how this works. So um, with that, we basically uh, are just going to leave this for now. And what we're going to actually use instead of using those specific drag types, if you wanted to, uh, you know, detect for a URL or something specific, you can use an NS array, just create an array and add the object of whatever type you want. But we're going to be using a little secret sort of of the NS image class, which has basically all the drag types that are contained in NS image. So we can say NS image, and we just want the image pasteboard types. And basically, just to summarize what a pasteboard is, there's the NS pasteboard class, which essentially um, is contains all the objects that you copy or paste around. So if you ever hear the term copy to the pasteboard, that's um, essentially any object you're dragging around or you copy, that's basically going to be a pasteboard item. So in this case, our pasteboard items are going to be anything that we're dragging around. So what this entire method right here is basically saying is that we're registering ourselves to become ready to accept um, whatever pasteboard types the NS image class has. Now, uh, if you want to go a little further, like I said before, you can always option click this and uh, you can see that uh, when this loads up here and you click on standard data types and again, you can just put any of these in an NS array to accept different types. So if you wanted to find out uh, you know, a little bit more about NS pasteboard type HTML, basically it's HTML data that you might drag in. So basically all this enables for you is more, um, it allows you to specify certain types that you want to be looking for. So that's pretty much that, uh, but of course when we call the image pasteboard types method, it's going to return an NS array of the image types that we can use. So that's um, all we had to do for that, and now we're good to start accepting different types into our view. So um, in the next tutorial, I'll go over a few of the dragging methods. So um, I'll cover all the dragging methods that aren't clickable, basically, or aren't uh, releasing the image. So um, what I mean by this is I'll cover all the methods that you drag something into the view or out of the view or update around the view. Basically, I'll cover all those methods, and um, you'll see that um, that how that works in the next tutorial. And that's where we're going to use start using bitwise operators and stuff. So again, if you haven't watched those C tutorials, make sure you watch those before going into the next tutorial. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you got a little bit of an idea of what we're getting into here. We're simply uh, for so far, we just created an NSView subclass that contains an image. And then we just tell ourselves that we're going to um, basically be monitoring for specific image types. So that's basically all there is for uh, this tutorial. And if you have any questions about this so far, feel free to leave them in the question or the comments below. And please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next two tutorials.